Isaiah chapter 34. Nahum, the 34th book of the Bible. We're looking at Armageddon. Looking at a place called Armageddon. You see, you can see the video here. Here's Armageddon. Come near ye nations, United Nations, to hear. Bring the nations together so you can hear. And hearken ye people. So here's a passage not written to Hebrews, not written, written to the nations. Let the earth hear. And all that therein, the world, this, everybody. All the world, all the nations, and all the earth. <clears throat> the scriptures apply to Hebrews, Israelites, the church, Gentiles, and all the earth. The prophecy about there'll be no king when Jesus comes in Jeremiah, oh, earth, earth, earth. So one of the rightfully things you got to do to rightly divide is you got to find who is the scripture talking to. I mean, if you want to run over to Malachi and you know bring bring in the storehouse, he's talking to Israel, talking to the priests, the Levites, the nation of Israel, in the Old Testament. So you show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be shamed, rightly dividing the word true. All things that come forth of it. For the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations. All is all, all that can be all. But something, you know, America is going to some ALL nations. And his fury upon all their armies. Isaiah 34, all their armies. He has utterly destroyed them. He has delivered them to slaughter. Revelation 19. This is the this is Armageddon. This is the United Nations get everybody together. Isaiah 34 says, All the world to hear this message. God's gonna conquer you. But America will be on top. No. America is going to fail by the time the Lord Jesus Christ and Armageddon comes. Now, there will be sheep nations that take care of Israel, groups of people, they're slain, also shall be cast out, the dead, they're stink, all right, they're dead, been dead for a while. Uh, Martha says, Lord, it's been four days, he stinketh, shall come up out of their carcasses, death, and the mountains shall be melted with their blood. The high places are gone. All the things going to the high places, they're gone. And all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved. And the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. That's the first time scroll is mentioned. When this is all over, Mother Earth is gone and the heavens are, are, are scrolled up. And Peter says, with a fervent heat, destroyed. And all their hosts shall fall down as a leaf falls off the vine. Yeah. And as a falling fig from a fig tree. For my sword, God's sword, shall be bathed in heaven. That's the only time babe shows up in the Bible. Behold, it shall come down upon Indomedia. Well, now what's that? What's that weird word? That's... Eat them. That's down here by the Dead Sea. That's south of Israel. That's Edom. That's Esau. That's the brother of Jacob. That sold out his birthright for some bean. So, we go on and keep on mentioning... The enemy is in, and upon the people of my curse. Why is in the media, why is Edom cursed? Because they've been cursing, they've been fighting against their brother. And when we get to Jeremiah and, and um, 
Oh, I forget what prophet. I think he's Obadiah. But writes about Edom. I think he's Obadiah. When Babylon comes in and sacks Judah, the Jews flee. <laughs> they go everywhere. And there, there are Jews that cross the River Jordan. There are Jews that went down south. Edom captured the Jews. And brought them to Babylon. And God says, I will curse them that curse you. There's the curse. The sword of the Lord. Does that sound familiar for a publication? The sword of the Lord? It's filled with blood. Well, okay. It is fat. With fatness. With the blood of lambs and goats. The fat of kidneys of ram, the sacrifice, the animals of sacrifice. And the Lord has a sacrifice in Basra. That's north in Edom. Basra is one of those names that you find in America. I grew up in the region. There was, there was a place called Basra, Connecticut. Trying to steal from Israel. Trying to steal that Middle East promise. And a great slaughter in the land of Indomenia. That's Esau again. Is that, is that land of Esau down south? Down here. And the unicorns. Oh, the unicorns. How come New Age can have unicorns? But the Bible can't. Why is... Secular and worldly writers allowed to write about unicorns. But God the Father who created all animals is not allowed. What actually is a unicorn? Uni means one. A one horned, a one -horned animal. How's that? I know they got horses and wings and all that other junk. But that's junk. This is the Bible. I believe in unicorns. Because they're in the Bible. The unicorns shall come down with them. And the bullocks. With the bulls. And their land shall be soaked with blood. Edomenia. Going to be a bloodshed. Revelation 14, 20. And their dust made fat with fatness. For it is the day's Lord, it is, it is the day of the Lord's vengeance, second advent. The year recompense for the controversy with Zion. You, you have a problem with my, my place called Zion? Well, I'll tell you what. God said, I'll, I'll take care of you. I'll curse everybody. Right there, there there's Zion. Jerusalem. That's the place. That's God's city. That's where Jesus Christ is going to sit. King of kings, Lord of lords. The king of the Jews. And the streams in Edom therefore shall turn into pitch and dust there as a brimstone. And the land shall become burning pitch. So what you have going on here is you have an intermediate in the millennium down by the Dead Sea. You've got a pit of hell, a fire. And today somebody wrote, when's all sin going to end? And somebody wrote, when Jesus Christ comes. No, it's not. There's going to be sin in the millennium. And there's going to be a point that there will be people that will cast into this pit of hell. In the millennium. Because they've sinned. We read about the other night that, you know, if Egyptians don't come and worship the Lord, there'll be no rain. Or I read that the other day. So, there's a hell on earth in the millennium. Quite possibly, you might have looked down into that pit, but maybe not burn. Wow. Hell will be real. And this brimstone burning pitch is almost like the slaughter 
and destruction and the judgment of Sodom and Gomorrah. That's in the same area that we're looking at. I mean, Sodom and Gomorrah is down here. And Edom, just above Edom. And all those who are getting this on audio, I'm sure we got a new program here when I'm showing with the map. Um, and shall not be quenched night or day. Well, what's that type of? Two things. The altar, the brazen altar of burnt offerings and hell. The smoke thereof shall go up forever. From generation to generation, it shall lie away. In the eternal life, when they get into the lake of fire that burns forever, you're just a smoke burning. You're not even a substance. From generation to generation, it shall lie waste. None shall pass through it forever and ever. It's a dead land. But the comrade. And you'll find this in Isaiah chapter 13. And when there's destruction all that, you find birds. And one of the parables that Jesus gives about the sower that went out with the, with the seed, he says that, uh, that he went out and sowed seed, and the birds came and ate of the seed. And when he tells us what that parable is, he says the devil came. Birds are a type of the devil. And he said there was, a, there was a tree and the birds nestled in, in the branches. That's the type of devils. And there are some birds, they're unclean. The comrade and the bitter shall possess it. This area that has been desolate, made desolate by God, by the curse upon Esau. Yahweh also and the raven shall dwell in unclean and birds. And he shall stretch out upon it the line of confusion. But what do you do when the Bible, God's not the author of confusion? Well, rightly divining, that's tongues. And when you bring tongues into church, you got confusion. God's not the author of that. But there's a place here where there is confusion. And the stones of emptiness. And they shall call the nobles, the high archies there of the kingdom and none shall be there there's no rulership there's no authority and her princes shall be nothing so there's no government in this land of Esau that's been cursed that's turned into this a burning pitch eternally and it's cursed and thorns part of the curse Shall come up in her palaces. The buildings are still there, but the people are not. And they're going to be overpowered and overcome by plant. Uh, Chernobyl. They're showing pictures now of that, that nuclear power plant that went berserk. And there's nobody there. That's the picture here. This is no fire. And the, the pictures that they show is plant light. Has overpowered the land. Nettles and brambles, cursed weeds, and the fortresses. I mean, where is supposed to be military posts? There's just weeds. You find that in New England, old farmers' areas where the walls are broken down and big trees grown where the, you know grow where he knocks the wall down. And I've been in old buildings, you know, walking out in the woods, and they're just plant life. No human life, plant life. And a lot of that plant life, too, is because as far as the places in New England and Connecticut, they had farm animals. And farm animals poop. So they manured the area. And there's not a man there to cut, trim, prune. There's plenty of places like that in Connecticut. It shall be a habitation of dragons. I believe that's the lizard kind of dragons. I believe. 
and a court for owls. Wild beasts of the desert shall also meet, and the wild beasts of the island. I don't know what island. I don't know. And the satyr. Ooh, and if you look over here, you can see the video. This is the Eastern Bible Dictionary, Satar. Greek mythology says that man, half man, half goat. But I got this up. If you can see this on the video, you see that definition right there? Hairy one. That's interesting. Because you know what in the media means? The land of Egypt. I mean, the land of Edom, it means red. This satar means hairy one. Do you know what Edom means? The hairy red one. You remember when Esau was born, he was red and hairy all over? You remember when Rebecca wanted to fool her husband with Jacob that she had to get goats covering and cover her son Jacob because he was smooth skinned? In order to deceive dad, he had to put hair. So, are you going to say it's a half goat, half man? I'm going to say something hairy red. That's a relationship with Esau. Now, let me go off street. Let me let me throw a wild thing out there. You know, they're mixing everything today with DNA and science. Maybe they'll come up with an Edomite that will be a half animal and half human. Maybe you have nice red hair. But that satar is the next best thing when you come to the tribulation period where you got these horses and these scorpion tails that bite and you can't get death. This is around the time of Armageddon. Do you see what kind of weird animals is floating around? And I thank God God's not going to put me in the tribulation period. Never mind the Antichrist running around. You got these weird animals. So it's a Satar shall cry to his fellow. So you got a Mr. and Mrs. Satar. They're buddies. The screech owl. By the way, the Satar, that's the only other place in the Bible it's right there. Everyone. The screech owl also shall rest there. This burning pit. Here's a burning pit of sulfur and fire and, and, and tar. And there's birds living in it. And these beings. Kind of creepy. And, and find for herself a place of rest. In a burning pit? There shall the great owl make her nest and lay and hatch. That's the, that's the first time that word shows up. And gather under her shadow. There shall the vultures, unclean, also gather everyone with her mate. That mate shows up in verse 15 and verse 16. That's the only two places mate shows up in the Bible. That's the only two places that this mate shows up. In this area down south. This is... Stop paying money for the movies. Open your Bible and read it. Movies have science fiction. The Bible has science non-fiction. I saw the most disgusting thing in a bookstore. Christian fiction. That's like having kosher baloney. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord. Ah, oh, look at that. In the middle of all this, God says, get you the book of the Lord. Get you a Bible. You know, we're in the time of Armageddon. We're in the time of the tribulation period. We're in the time coming to the millennium. And the Bible says, seek ye the book of the Lord. You know, you know what those Jews are going to find in the tribulation period? 
Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass away. They're going to find a Bible. Now, I've been told, I don't know how true it is, but I've been told in Silipetra, which is the area where we're talking about. I don't know if it's on, here it is right here, Petra. A lot of people, this Petra means, that's where Israel's going to go for a refuge, that place that God has prepared for the Jews, Revelation 12. I have been told that there have been people there, and in Petra, they've gone and put Bibles. They're putting Bibles there. The book of the Lord and read. All right, get you the book of the Lord. I got a Bible. I got a family Bible. It's in the bookshelf. Then the Bible says read it. And the Christian is told to study You're to get the Bible, and you're to read the Bible, and you're to study the Bible. It ain't supposed to be a divider between books and a bookshelf. No one of these shall fail. Everything we read about chapter 34 and all the prophecies of the Bible, the book of the Lord, everything that's been prophesied will be fulfilled. None shall want her mate. And that's the only second place it shows up, only two places. For my mouth, God's mouth, God's voice, it has commanded. And his spirit, there's the Holy Spirit, it has gathered them. Everything we read in chapter 34, spooky, what it, God says it's all going to happen. There's going to be satars, going to be satars. They're going to be a uh, unicorn. It's going to be unicorns, plural. Oh, but, you know, you can get your other garbage and junk out of Hollywood. And he, God, has cast a lot for them. And his hand has divided it with them by line. God's going to draw a line in the sand. They shall possess it forever from generation to generation Shall they dwell therein? Is that talking about the, the, the animals? Is that talking about this land? I would think it is. Uh, quite interesting. 